1969, a group of astronauts changed the world. They walked on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In 1972, our journey ended. We've never been back. 2010 begins a year of change. Private companies are working on next generation spaceships. Governments are looking to go back to the moon and on to Mars. It's time to look up and dream again. It's time to push humans into the cosmos. It's time to educate and engage the planet. It's time for Space Vidcast. Vcast 321 for Friday, June 18th, 2010. You gotta come in this way. What, what's going I'm on? Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm matching my jack. I'm sorry. Wow, you do. Look at that. Okay, go on. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me, as always, is a beautiful, lovely, wonderful, and talented Carrie Ann Higginbotham. We will be your hosts this evening for an action packed, fluffy sode of space. <laughs> it is. It's like the, it's the most. Should we start with the at more newsy item or should we start with the fluff? I don't know. I, oh, I don't. That's a hard one. We're I don't gonna start know. with some space news. Space news. So, how many people remember the Iridium Network? I, I, not me. Okay, this is <laughs> not this it. Is, this is going back a ways. This is a uh, satellite network for phones. It was what it was originally, originally designed to be. It was okay. a billion dollar satellite infrastructure. It was pretty awesome and then it, nothing ever really came of it and it sold for pennies on the dollar. Okay. I thought, I knew that we still had the Iridium satellites up there and I know someone had bought them. We were kind of using them basically I think for government stuff and some basic phone stuff. But I thought basically it was, yeah exactly as the, as the chat room saying you can watch Iridium flares. You can actually see the satellites. You know, streaking across the sky, it's kind of, they're known as iridium flares, they're kind of cool. Um, That's kind of cool. But I, I just figured, you know, those phones haven't been updated in years, they're still the old giant, you know, sat phones, like you awesome. see in movies where they take the antenna and, like, this giant antenna, like, hello, I'm the bad guy, I've got a sat phone. <laughs> right, one of those. Right. So I just figured, you know, they'll, they'll do what they do, they'll let the network die, and off you go. Right. I had no idea these guys were actually still around. <laughs> Terrible of me, I know. But they are. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was telling Ben about uh, SpaceX just won the Iridium contract, and he was like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> They're still around? The and I was like, well, that's what? what it says. I don't, um, yeah. Um, which apparently you know, is the largest single commercial launch deal ever signed, which is huge. That's huge it's for like, SpaceX. It's, it's like ha almost half a billion dollars? What's the? It's like 6.8 per set. So it's, uh, yeah, let me double check on the numbers there. Hold on. Ooh. Oh, good job with that. Ooh, that's a newbie mistake. I just yeah, want to point out, uh, yeah, so I've got my, my new uh, Evo phone. I will not be going to the iPhone 4. And one thing you learn very early on in broadcasting school is the moment you start a show, silence your phone. Oops. This, really? You learned that in broadcasting school way well, before everyone had cell phones? Yes. That's impressive. Broadcasting was really smart. I had, no, I had a cell phone in broadcasting school. You, you forgot too, didn't you? You did. It's a night of forgetting to silence, silence our oh, phones. Oh no, right. mine silenced. So uh, SpaceX won this giant contract. Yeah, $492 it's like, million. Dollars. So just under half a billion dollars. You know, right, nice yeah. Way. They, they've already gotten some of that money. They've got 19 million of it. Right. Because the Iridium uh, basically is, is, what's the parent company? So, Ir Iridium Communications Inc. Yeah. Iridium yeah, is on NASDAQ. Yeah, exactly. Um, they did, you know, they did some chopping around. They didn't just go with uh, SpaceX. They did talk with the uh, uh, Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, and the, the I love this name of this, the Gr China Great Wall Industry Corporation. That is a pretty cool name. Um, and they talked with all three of them, and SpaceX clearly came in as uh, way under. Yeah, yeah, way under. So some people are saying space uh, spacenews.com is saying that SpaceX way undercut the competition, and that's how they 
won this contract. But that's kind of the cool thing about SpaceX is that yeah. their system is designed to get you know cheaper over time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's supposed to be recoverable for certain stages. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, just kind of reuse the exact same parts between the different vehicles. Right. It's kind of what what space should be. I mean, not to be a big old SpaceX fanboy over here, but it makes sense. And while the, they may lose, I don't know their financials, so I'm speculating here. But they may lose money on the first few launches. Right. I think the hope would be that eventually <laughs> they're actually making money on those launches, even at six. Point, what was it, six point something million per launch? It's like 6.8. Wh which is, you know, not a lot of money to put a satellite into orbit. That's straight up, it's not. It's right. a, it sounds like it's a two year contract starting in 2015, um, which is kind of cool. And it's all for um, Iridium Next. Uh, what is there, anyone know what Iridium Next is and how do I get a phone? Is it still a phone network? Do you, is that what you want? I want an Iridium Next phone. That, in fact, I'm not moving to the iPhone 4. I'm moving to the Iridium Next phone. I want a sat phone. That way, I can't accept any phone calls when I'm indoors. That's kind of funny. It's going to be great. Actually, there is a really cool sat phone. We, we covered it a while ago. There's mm -hmm. uh, one of the most powerful phone satellites is by Terrastar, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And they've got a smartphone that doesn't have the giant satellite antenna. And so it looks like it just a Windows mobile device. And that's the downside is, is Windows mobile device. It's like, really guys? Really, Windows mobile? But uh, um, it's just, it's just like, it looks like a regular phone, but it's actually a sat phone. And it can jump between a GSM network and the satellite network. Yeah, and which so was really cool. you pretty much have coverage on 98% of the planet. And if you're- Tell them about when we tried it. That, no, we tried a different one. Oh, darn, So Sorry. we tried one that was on a different, so I mean, come on, we're geeks, right? So we did try a sat phone, and uh, it was on one of the networks that's degraded. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of cool, because we were in New Mexico, we were doing, I think we were doing the NGLC, uh, and we wanted to make sure we had phone service, so we actually had a satellite phone. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was it was kind of neat. You know? I'm sorry, I'm still reading just to make sure, you trying to find the information, but I'm not finding it fast enough. Yeah, what, what Iridium Next is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Someone, someone, will, someone will figure it out. All right. So, moving on to the fluffy part of Space Vidcast, if that wasn't fluffy enough for you. Uh, I gotta tell you, this stuff is cool though. It may be fluffy, but it's freaking cool. <laughs> We're, this is the phone episode, just so y'all know. This is the phone episode it of Space Vidcast. Is, yeah. The Rocket Racing League yes. has released their app in the App Store. Yeah, they're not, they're not leaguing yet. They're not leaguing. But they have an app. They've got the, they've got the pre-league app. The, I, don't I don't know what to call that. Yeah, I'm not sure either. <laughs> it is a game that you can download for two. PLA. You they're what? PLA. P, the PLA, the pre league app. Yes. <laughs> we have a TLA for the PLA. PLA. Yeah. Uh, it's a app that you can download for two ninety nine in the App Store. They've got a demo video in HD. Check it out. Don't you want that? 
Well, the other cool thing is, and I was trying to read the chat room a little bit, so I might have missed them mentioning it, um, but it also acts as a mini news feed for the Rocket Racing League. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not just this game, which looks really cool, and you can customize all the stuff and, and shoot down people, and leaderboard and the Facebook stuff, um, but you'll also get you know, up-to-date information on Rocket Racing League and what they're doing. And the Rocket Racing League, for those who don't know, is basically like NASCAR in the skies. Mm -hmm. It's taking the awesome parts of NASCAR, the awesome parts of rockets, slamming them together into one uber sport. Uh, that is very, you saw a lot of that in the game. And what's going to be, it's, it's not just innovative in a sports standpoint, but they're also innovating from a broadcast standpoint as mm -hmm. well. Where you as a viewer, you can actually watch and see the 3D objects like those, those, um, like the rings and the, stuff the rings like that you saw, you'll actually see those on the screen in the real Rocket Racing League mm -hmm. when you're watching in television and on the webcast. You can choose your views, and here's where it gets even cooler because you know you can do some of that today, right? With the uh, NFL and, and you know right. they've got the lines and the on the ground. This is just which weird. everyone's used to now. You're, if you right. go to it in live and in person, you're like, what? I, what's going on? <laughs> Where's the line? Where's <laughs> the line? But uh, th this is more advanced in that it's three dimensional in space and tracked by the camera. So mm -hmm. as you as they pan the cameras, the the race track will be showing in the sky mm -hmm. which okay that's cool but then on top of that they're planning to make it so that you can race actual rocket racers in their games mm -hmm. so they're going to link their games like all their television and media their webcasting and the real life sport all together this is going to be awesome. This is going to be very cool. No, there's still a ways out. It's not like this is coming up next month. <laughs> yeah, They're no. still testing the tech and getting the, the yeah. funding in place and all that fun jazz, yeah. but oh my gosh. And I just want to say really quickly, they're not paying us to say any of this stuff. We really are this excited about it. Um, and then the other thing is that this is a Diamantas production. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that is great. That, so I really do believe in this. Foundation. Right, I a really Diamantis do believe production. in this coming, coming to be. ISU. A GMS production. <laughs> because there's a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of people who would say stuff like this, or it sounds like a good idea, or doesn't uh, sound like fun for, you know, for 3030. But, you know, this is, like I said, this is a Diamandis production. And I really do believe that this is going to, uh, to come to be quite quickly, a lot faster than I think people are kind of giving them well, credit for. Here's why I think it's cool is because we, you know, we're all about human space flight, and we do our best to get people engaged, but fundamentally we attract other space geeks first and foremost. Right. The top of the pyramid. And then, you know, it trickles down a little bit, and we, we get some people excited. I, I think a geek mom was kind of saw that there are other geeks on the internet, and she started doing some Twitter stuff, not solely because of us, but I think we helped, I would like to think. Maybe Even our know. director's almost interested in space now. Almost. We're getting them there. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it, it rubs off on people, but they're... Imagine the effect that Rocket Racing League is going to have on human space flight when people start so looking cool. at it. Because it's, it's not space flight, but it's still rockets. And people are going right. to look at that and go, well, we're, how do we take this to the next step? Right. And they, they can use it kind of as a way to you know, jam open the door a little bit and get people to start thinking. Because when the mass populace says, this is something we want to do, we want human space flight, our congressional leaders, I believe, will listen. And I think that, you know... Fundamentally, it only takes one voice to change the world, but the, you know that one voice can build an army of other people who have the same voice. So, a With a all the same voice. A, DM, a Diamandis production. A Diamandis production. All right. Um, <laughs> let's you know. Let's go to break before we come back with the yep. other. Uh, the other fluff. Yeah, I don't. I don't really want to watch the other video. There's more um, cotton candy in this. There episode. is. Uh, I don't want to watch the other video. I think but actually, be fine. before we go to break, um, Coaster Ghost in the chat room did bring up the Iridium Next stuff, and there's a there's a video. It's a two-minute video. I'm not going to play it. But you can go to uh, iridium.com slash about slash iridiumnext.aspx, so their .net shop. And uh, basically it says it's bringing enhanced uh, global voice and data connectivity. And here's what's cool about Iridium, 100% global penetration. So they're hitting the poles, which most of the networks don't do. Yeah, that is they pretty huge. So 100% global penetration. Thanks to SpaceX. And it, <laughs> Thanks in small Well, things, right? <laughs> Maybe, we don't know yet. You can make any, as many satellites as you want. You can't get those birds in the air. It's not going to matter. But summing this up, it feels like they're really putting an emphasis on data for Iridium Next, which nice. could be really cool, especially for a broadcasting show like Space Vidcast, where we're out in the middle of the desert and there's no data access, and all we need is a data feed to broadcast. So Iridium, here we come. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Exploration. It's driven us around the world, across vast oceans, and even into space. We set sail on this new sea because there is new knowledge to be gained. Explorers like Christopher Columbus, Lewis and Clark, Amelia Earhart, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin. Spatial astronauts like Sally Ride, working to make the impossible possible. Projects like Apollo, the International Space Station, robotic missions to all the planets in the solar system, and back here on Earth, developing incredible technologies like the Internet. When we explore, we find our future. When you explore, you'll find your future, too. We've been to the moon. Twelve people have walked there, but that's only the beginning. We landed on the moon with primitive technology. A simple cell phone today has more power. How will you use that power? One day, it will be easy for you to go into space in a new generation of spaceships. You may even go to Mars to set up a base. Maybe one of you will venture to the red planet and look back at the Earth or live and work in a base on the moon, or go to other places beyond your wildest imagination. You'll use technology that hasn't even been invented yet, find solutions that we can't comprehend right now, and look at math and science in new ways. The fact is, anything is possible. You decide the future. When we were in break, um, Fun NASA on Twitter mentioned, uh, "Can't uh, I'm sorry, Rocket Racing League is cool, but it's still too on Earth. Uh, he wants to have a X-wing fighter, and you know I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, Rocket well, Racing League in duh. space would be even <laughs> more awesome. Imagine that having you know cameras like positioned pointed back oh, at Earth and having those rocket shots going around the Earth, but <laughs> baby steps. <laughs> you don't just jump from NASCAR to space races, although cool." Um, you know, you, you gotta you gotta kind of work your way up there. Right. But imagine what they're going, to, what the uh, DMS productions are going to be able to pull off uh, with just just to the starting point. Um, now they've never said we're going to space, by the way. That's just no. us dreaming. Right. But it seems like a logical next step down the road. And what a great way to get mere mortals excited about human spaceflight. For sure. Absolutely. It kind of pulls a makes sci-fi feel more sci-fact. Sci wow. Fact? Is that a tinted window or is the sky really that color? No, the yeah. sky's really that color. We've been having a lot of different storms lately, so wow. sorry if about that. If we suddenly go off the air, that's because the building blew over from a tornado. The yeah. sky is literally green. All right. It's not a good color, but we're ignoring that right now. So speaking of things that are awkward to look at, uh, you know, you want to you wanna do the uh, tooth one? Okay, so I know a lot of you guys have already seen this, and I know that it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with space flight per se, but all I'm saying is that if this is the way my parents decided to extract teeth from my mouth, <laughs> I probably would have been interested in space a long time ago. Or you would be running from it. <laughs> <laughs> I have terrible memories, terrible memories. So, yeah, as you can see, it's a model rocket that I'm sure most people can get at home. Way, the kid with way the too much tooth. floss. A geek man hasn't shown her daughter yet. <laughs> <laughs> and said child with said tooth. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Oh, you know what right where this is you going. Doing? Oh, it's just, it's awesome. Huh? I'm just getting my tooth out. And how are you going to do that? Do the rocket. You're going to fire a rocket off? Yeah. And the rocket's tied to your tooth? Yeah. All right. You ready for this? Yeah. I'm not. Okay. You got to push that button really hard till that lights up. And then when it lights up, you have to push that one. Okay. You ready? Go. Awkward. At least you mostly have the. Don't do that, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, don't do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, 
You just pulled your tooth out with a rocket. Okay, you're bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really you see sad. see the rocket? Uh-uh. I don't see it either. <laughs> I'm too busy laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he totally needed two cameras on that. He needed one on the kid and one on the rocket. Oh, we probably didn't even think it was going to work. Well, you know what? what? It certainly pulled your tooth out now, didn't it? <laughs> Hopefully we could find the tooth, but I doubt we're going to be able to find it. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, I think, worded it perfectly in the chat room. Yeah. Good stuff. He wasn't sure if he needed to cry. <laughs> right? Right? I had a principal oh, who had to take a tooth man. out for me. And he was like, so how's your mom and dad? And I was like, oh, they did it. And he just yanked it. And I didn't even, because I wasn't focusing on it. It wasn't one of those one, two. It just happened. I, I... Yep. You know, nothing. So sure, all the kid knows is that he presses a button and kind of goes, and it's gone. <laughs> and for sure, that would that's totally the correct reaction. All right, how about, uh, let's close this oh, show out with some, some newsy news. Some newsy news? That's a highly technical term. You're gonna have to introduce this because I have to log into a computer so we can show the video. It's a long story. Post show, post show. Okay, so the Orion spacecraft, which a lot of Orion spacecraft, Orion crew module, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, is being built, it's coming together, it's doing its thing. The escape version, not the full version. Right, sorry, I know. See, this is why you shouldn't have me introducing some of these things because I apparently don't know what I'm saying. Um, so, uh, the bulkhead and the nose cone was part of the, the NASA picture of the day, today or yesterday, something along those lines, the last couple of days. And the thing is that there's this cool machine thing that says you know, that it's welding these two parts together. And I was like, well, that's, I mean, it's beautiful. I don't know, if, did you grab the picture? Uh, no, I don't have the picture, but if you go to card two, oh. uh, Kath, go to card two, which is the Mac Pro, the guest computer. Mm -hmm. Here you go, Here is here is the stir welding, right? Yeah. All right, here you go, so there's the stir welding. So the thing is that, you know, I'm looking at the picture and I was like, well, that doesn't really look like welding to me, but maybe it's just me. And this is the kind of welding that they're doing, and it's called friction stir welding. And that spinny part is doing the welding. And as you notice, it's not really melting the two pieces together at all. It almost looks like it's making a divot kind of thing. And yeah, there you go. It, what it's doing is that it's hitting the pieces together at such a friction that they are what they call plasticizing together. So the metals aren't actually melting to form one piece. They're just, they're plasticizing enough to just sort of sh share molecules, I guess, or something, and then it, be it just becomes this solid piece. It's, yeah. it's like the coolest thing. Like, I can't even get over how awesome this and is. And this was actually one of the big advantages of Constellation and the next generation space travels. Now, rather than using you know, this, you know, 30-year-old mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing technology, they can actually use, oddly enough, space-age manufacturing technology <laughs> to build spacecrafts and create these uh, do you still call it a weld at that point? Well, uh, I mean, that it's still what it is. I mean, it's it's that's a different kind of welding, is what it. I mean, you're still t putting two pieces together. So my understanding is that it's it's it, there's a lot less um, variation in the metal, mm -hmm. and it's a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's a lot safer. It's like having a solid piece. Yeah. So it's a it's, just <laughs> a, it's a better manufacturing technique, and that's just one of the advantages of moving to a next generation vehicle. Ironically, though, the big thing about Constellation was that. It was supposed to use the the existing um, right the space shuttle technologies. Oops! But they wanted to move to all this new manufacturing stuff, right. which means you can't use the existing space shuttle stuff because that's all you use the old manufacturing ha, stuff. Ha, ha. So while it looked like the old space shuttle stuff, it wasn't the old space shuttle stuff. So anyhow, uh, that. But that, I thought that that was very cool. That and is cool, and you know I think SpaceX uses the similar technique where yeah. they're you know they're just spinning things and they're. Uh, they've got an incredible video. You know what? Um, stall for a moment. I think there's a video on their site I want to show you. Hang on. Okay, so we're stalling. Um, anyway, but no, dance. I, I dance. Thought that, <laughs> um, the process is used uh, by NASA's McCowd uh, assembly facility. Um, it doesn't actually melt the metal, like we said, or apply any heat to it itself. It's all friction and pressure, and uh, they. It's usually used on aluminum. Is kind of one of the best, I guess. Uh, uh, materials for this, um, but they keep the original character char characteristics of the metal unchanged. 
I don't know, I just, the whole thing is just very, very cool, I think. Um, yeah, visible, but doesn't have like that bump, like when you're welding something and you kind of have that, you know, the metal melts, if that makes any sense. I can't find it. It's, it's right. there's a video, you know, I'll just tell you guys where to go. If you go to SpaceX's website, they've got the um, canisters where they keep the pressurized gases and fuels and whatnot, right. and there's a video of them um, you know, basically taking two halves and, and turning it into one. Hmm. And, it's, and, you know, normally you stick it together and you create this weld, whereas mm -hmm. they just kind of spin them together and it's kind of, it's kind of cool. So uh, that's on the space, just SpaceX.com for that, uh, that information. All right. Any other cool news items and whatnot? I think that was everything for this particular show. Um, Fluffy. Yeah, oh show. gosh, I thought that there was something else really quick, but no, I can't remember what no, it was. No, we did that, we did that, we did no, that. No, I know, we did all of this. It was like something that I meant to put in and I didn't. That's all right. I just want to thank I everyone for watching the live show. I know we had a, a guest lined up for tonight, but last minute circumstance uh, uh, kicked in. We'll try to bring him on for a future show. It'll be awesome. And uh, you guys all stay, stick around uh, if you're watching live. We'll go into post show for a few minutes and just kind of talk with you and have a fun continuing conversation. If you didn't notice last week's show, Mm -hmm. We included post show for everyone. Yes. So you did not have to be an Epic subscriber. We still formatted it like Epic and whatnot, mm -hmm. but did not need to be an Epic subscriber to watch last week's post show uh, because I thought that it was a really good post show mm -hmm. and that everyone should have access to it. And it's just kind of Aww, a taste. I know. Thanks, Ben. I'm so sweet. Aww. It's just a little taste of what Epic post shows are like. And that's just one small thing that you get oh, with an funny. Epic subscription. Not only do you get the post shows uh, for things like STS 132, you got like uh, someone help me out. Was it three gigs of uh, like downloadable content? It was like PDF files and posters and just really cool stuff that you got with STS-132. You get uh, uh, additional lengthened interviews. Mm -hmm. You get additional lengthened clips. You get the raw downloads of a lot of these clips that you you can't get on any other site as far right. as I know. The original raw MPEG-2 files off of the uh, satellite without any branding or anything else, just straight off the satellite. It looks beautiful. 720p60. Mm -hmm. It's like it. 12.5 megabits per second looks gorgeous. So absolutely consider purchasing Space Vidcast Epic at spacevidcast.com slash epic. And it's what helps us do what we do. I'd like to thank everyone for watching us this week. Don't forget to tune in next week, Friday at 2 a.m. Coordinated Universal Time. For those of you in the U.S., that's Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific, 8 night, uh, Mountain, 9 Central, and 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. <laughs> I, I was doing all Seven, of that in my head. Eight, I, all nine, I had to do was add ten. one to each one, but uh -huh. instead I tried to calculate the offset for each each one of them in my head for some reason. <laughs> See you next week. In 1979, our journey, 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 our